uh, how we can study uh, biological molecules using uh, physics-based tools. Nano is very small, and many uh, proteins and DNA and RNA molecules are just a few nanometers in, in diameter. And, and about the smallest thing you can uh, see with your naked eyes uh, is the human hair, and that's already 50,000 times uh, a single nanometer. Many people call a protein a nanomachine because these molecules can uh, perform important functions in the cell, moving uh, in the cell precisely, uh, powered by uh, chemical energy, just like the cars are moving on the highway using uh, gasoline as a fuel source. And these molecules can uh, move on cellular highways using the cellular fuel source called ATP. Just to illustrate how small these proteins are, uh, that's me, okay? And it's in a cell inside my body, and a protein inside uh, one of my cells. If I, uh, you know, map it to uh, my body to the Earth, then the cell is like a city, uh, Rio uh, in Brazil, where the World Cup is going on, and the protein will be a player in the soccer field. Let's see. If and of course, my favorite is uh, Messi uh, <laughs> from Argentina. So there was a, a controversy about how these molecules move on in the cell. Uh, does it walk like a human or does it crawl like a baby? And we were able to use physics-based tools to address uh, this question many years ago. And here we can actually put a single fluorescent label, 형광 분자, on a known position of, of the moving protein. And then you can use a highly sensitive fluorescent microscopy in a dark room to image that uh, single molecule to a camera. The camera uh, here has a single pixel uh, size of 80 nanometers, and the protein that we are imaging is actually uh, much smaller than a pixel, but uh, because of uh, diffraction limited uh, imaging, as uh, Steve mentioned, or Heisenberg uncertainty principle, uh, your image shows up as uh, something that uh, spans multiple pixels, about 250 nanometers in diameter. Despite that, if you have good enough signal to noise ratio, then you can find the center with extremely high precision down to a single nanometer. So by uh, imaging a protein moving uh, in the uh, uh, on a surface. Let's see if the movie works here. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. Uh, we can actually uh, uh, determine the position of the molecule as a function of time very precisely and show that the average step size the protein takes is uh, 74 nanometers, which is a prediction by uh, this uh, a model that says the protein is a walker moving on the track uh, by walking. So this is one example of uh, answering an actually a uh, heated dis discussion going on uh, many years ago using advanced single molecule biophysical technologies. But if you want, uh, what we did was to uh, uh, image the motion of a soccer player in a soccer field by tagging the left foot of the player using a fluorescent molecule. And then, then you can turn off the light and then uh, image the movement of this molecule as a function of time, you can learn how quickly uh, he moves and how quickly he can change direction. But uh, this doesn't actually tell you uh, why he is such a great player. In fact, he has to change his shape all the time. Biophysicists call it conformations of a bi biomolecule. And, uh, if you want to learn uh, why uh, he's such a good player, and perhaps uh, using the knowledge to improve our national soccer team, then uh, you need to do uh, something better than just putting one die and then uh, image uh, the spot, because this doesn't actually tell you about the conformational changes. 
So we uh, uh, developed another technology uh, uh, called FRET. And here we use two uh, light bulbs of two dye molecules of different colors, green and red. So that when you excite the green molecule, you get green photons out from your fluorescence molecule. But as, as the red molecule comes nearby, then uh, uh, energy is transferred from green to red, and you get a red photons instead. This is a very strong function of uh, distance between the two molecules uh, around a few nanometers, ideal for many proteins that we study. So that you can uh, distinguish between you know, closed and open conformations of this butterfly or protein, uh, depending on which color is brighter. Here's another illustration, uh, Gangnam style, uh, in simple four steps. So if you label uh, the two hands of our world famous uh, wrapper Psi with green and red dye molecules, then depending on which uh, pause he's, uh, he's taking, you get different intensities of different colors. So, uh, so I actually dance on the stage to demonstrate the point. You see me handling uh, glow sticks, green and red. Okay, that is the principle of the methodology. And uh, I couldn't do this this time because the foundation did not provide enough budget to buy glow sticks. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> so it turns out that you cannot uh, image two uh, glow sticks as two different entities because of the uh, diffraction limit. Uh, so what you actually do is to look at the color. When the two dyes are at an intermediate distance, you see both green and red, so you see yellow. Uh, when they are closer, then you see, uh, actually farther away, you see green, you see red, so you can go back and forth. Ooh, sexy ladies. And then, <laughs> boom, okay. So that's the idea, and then, uh, and as a function of time, you can measure the intensities, and, uh, and then deduce what's going on. You can also measure, uh, how proteins move on the DNA by putting uh, one uh, uh, green dye on the protein and the red dye on the DNA. And as the protein uh, approaches the end of the DNA, then uh, uh, green signal will go down, red signal will, will go up. Animation uh, doesn't work here. Uh, you can actually get uh, data looking at almost as pretty. This is actual data as a function of time. Green is going down, uh, red is going up. The surprise there was that when the protein goes to the end of the track, instead of falling off, it somehow reappeared at the beginning and then repeated the process many, many times. So we uh, spent uh, quite a bit of effort to understand what is going on at the physical level and also what this might mean biologically for the function of the molecule in the cell. And then we wrote up a manuscript uh, reporting the findings and uh, asked uh, a magazine to uh, publish our study. And after the usual back and forth, eventually they agreed. So I spent uh, a lot of money uh, to hire local artists to uh, prepare this cover illustration. So here, uh, our protein, this old man is sitting on the DNA and they're reeling in the DNA to uh, uh, you know, kick off the proteins bound to the DNA. Unfortunately, they didn't take uh, this. Instead, they used uh, a picture of a diabetic mouse. Uh, well, uh, you win some and lose some, it's okay. But here, here's another image that was rejected by the magazine. Uh, my uh, student who did the work at Gia Park was sitting on the DNA, and uh, she's a superhero here, and knocking off the asteroids from uh, the DNA during the process. Well, because I spent so much money, I have to show these images somewhere. <laughs> uh, this is uh, one of those occasions. Let me show you some real data uh, related to DNA repair. 
Our DNA is under constant uh, attack by many sources, smoking, sunlight. And as a consequence, uh, we get cancer and many other diseases. For me, uh, every morning I look in the mirror, I see that I'm not getting any younger. So my, my skin is aging, uh, uh, largely due to DNA damage caused by sunlight. Do you know how much DNA you make in your lifetime if you connect DNA molecules in your body, produced in your lifetime, back to back? How far can you go from here to... m o k s o n g Jupiter. That's a good guess. The answer is uh, one light year. It's not the unit of time, it's a unit of distance. Light travels around the Earth seven and a half times per second, so this is a long distance. largely because you have so many cells. So if you want to uh, avoid uh, uh, cancer, and you need to repair uh, DNA damage of so much DNA that you produce in your lifetime, luckily, uh, we have DNA repair coming to the rescue. So there are protein-based nanomachines that can help you repair the DNA damage. Uh, there are several mechanisms, and I want to briefly mention uh, uh, one mechanism called homologous recombination, a, a jargon used by biologists. Here, DNA is damaged, it's broken into a broken DNA. To repair the DNA, you have to first you know, produce a single-stranded DNA that eventually finds a matching sequence in another DNA inside the cell to start the repair process. The process is mediated by a protein called uh, RAC-K in bacterial cells, and this protein forms a filament, and then this filament finds the matching sequence. This can be a very daunting task. Uh, if even in a small bacterial cell, you have several million base pairs of DNA. So how do you find the correct sequence quickly enough? For the young students here, uh, if you want to find your perfect boyfriend on campus with 5,000 boys, how do you achieve that? Right? Finding a soulmate. So one possibility is, is called uh, 3D search, three-dimensional search. It's actually uh, dating a random person uh, on the street. And if it's not a good match, you break up and you look for another one. But again, if you have uh, three million more, uh, possibilities, this is going to take a long time. It may never work. Okay? Actually, I, I was uh, tired of uh, doing the animation, so I made it work. It'll actually eventually work here. Yeah, but in, in real life, it's not going to be efficient. So it's going to take a long time. So another possibility is called 1D sliding, one-dimensional sliding. So instead of dating a random person on the street, uh, you join a club that has 20 or 30 people sharing the same interest. And then uh, you can sample all of the members before deciding to leave to, go to sample another club. So you join a knitting club, a book club. So that's uh, one d sliding. So filament binds and then uh, slides locally, trying to find the right match. So we use uh, this uh, FRED technology to obtain evidence of sliding. So if you have a, a filament labeled with uh, green and then DNA, Without the target sequence uh, uh, with red, then uh, as the uh, filament slides, you see uh, fluctuations in uh, red and green intensities that are anti-correlated. Uh, based on this and other kinds of data, we believe that we have very good evidence that there is actually sliding going on, up to about 200, 300 base pairs. Can you also find the right sequence during the process? Here we... Uh, uh, inserted uh, two partially matching sequences, seven or eight base pairs here and here. And so, uh, again, to using the same analogy, you can date uh, twin brothers, uh, and then uh, you, you date uh, one person for a while here, and then uh, it's not a perfect match, you hop off and then slide to find the other twin brother, and then you can go uh, back and forth. That's, the, uh, that's our data show. So we published our paper uh, in a new open access journal called eLife. And the students in Columbia University, they made a movie based on our paper and another paper from California and posted it on uh, 
on YouTube. So let me see whether this movie works. Ah, okay. Let me take a picture of you because uh, then, then it'll impress my children. Smile, smile, yeah. So you have uh, uh, this uh, Reiki filament binding and uh, sliding. You can do uh, three this search, one this search. That's the target sequence. Well, okay, so uh, the idea is that by using this uh, uh, sliding, you can make DNA repair up to uh, two or three hundred times faster. You may have noticed, uh, actually, let's, let's move on. So uh, I just spent a few more minutes to discuss some new uh, attempts in my lab. There's another powerful biophysical technique called optical trap, as Steve mentioned earlier. You, uh, you can view it as chopsticks made of light. You can use uh, laser light to trap a small particle, apply small forces, and measure forces, and uh, measure movements uh, with extremely high precision. The method was invented by uh, Art Ashkin and Stephen Chu almost 30 years ago. He uh, did not make any contribution. Uh, I believe in 1986 he was chasing uh, his housemaid. And the using, uh, you know, stretching to extract information uh, is not a, a new idea. Uh, in fact, uh, this cartoon taken from a medieval text uh, shows me uh, applying stretching force on Stephen Chu to extract information on, you know, various topics. So several years ago, uh, Sung Chol Hong, who was in my lab, now he's a faculty member of Seoul National University of Physics, uh, he developed a tool to combine uh, single molecule thread and optical trap. Uh, the idea is that, uh, to measure conformational changes of molecules using fluorescence, uh, but as a function of force that you apply. So if you imagine uh, uh, the optical trap as a purely mechanical tool, you are closing your eyes and uh, using your many, uh, hands to manipulate and measure mechanical responses. Whereas in our usual fluorescence imaging, we have uh, passive observations going on with hands tied in the back and uh, looking at the molecules with your eyes. And by combining the two, we can sample the best uh, of both worlds. And we have made uh, several interesting discoveries using the unique technology. The most exciting uh, development in te technology here is to uh, push that resolution of optical trap to the ultimate resolution of single base pairs of DNA. So this was done uh, together with Jan Schemler, my colleague in the same department at the University of Illinois. We can use uh, time sharing between two optical traps and fluorescence excitation to, uh, to achieve this. So there are a lot of things that we can do in the future and uh, so we are really excited about the direction. I want to finish uh, here uh, by uh, concluding that proteins are nanomachines, uh, superheroes, uh, superstars. I also want to uh, tell you that uh, scientists and biophysicists are a fun-loving bunch of people. And again, uh, science is really, really fun. Thank you very much.